Shuya is the CEO of a company that specializes in creating video games. He's charismatic, smart, and admired by many women in the country. One day, on his way to the office, he gets hit by a car. He quickly contacts his assistant, Xing Yun, and tells her to come to him immediately, since she's nearby. When Yun arrives and sees the driver of the car, she says, Again? This keeps happening. Can't they just leave his charisma alone? Shuya approaches the car and moves the driver away from it. He then tells Yun to handle the situation with his girl, referring to the driver, and walks away. The driver, however, follows him, trying to strike up a conversation and get to know him better, but he ignores her. Yun stops the driver and points out that she's in the wrong and will have to pay a large compensation. The driver is shocked, realizing her plan to get close to Shuya has failed. She runs off, but Yun catches up to Shuya in the elevator and starts talking about him. She recalls how, two years ago, Shuya met her by chance, learned her name, and found out it meant luck. He then decided to hire her, and since then, the company has become one of the most successful game development companies in the country. When they both arrive at the office, a designer presents Shuya with a proposal to develop characters for a game they are working on. But Shuya isn't impressed and dismisses the idea. Later, Yun meets with two other female employees who discuss how Shuya has been working on developing a game called The Dungeon, and has rejected all the development suggestions the designers have submitted. He even said that anyone with a good idea could present it, and if it's good enough, they could be responsible for developing The Dungeon, even if they were just a cleaner. The employees encourage Yun to come up with an idea and submit it and she begins to consider it. Shuya then goes horseback riding, impressing the women who watch him. After finishing his ride, he meets with the president of another company to negotiate a deal. Yun of course accompanies him. The president agrees to the deal, but only if Shuya can beat him in a horse race. Shuya confidently accepts, wins the race, and the president concedes the deal. Shuya then takes Yun home, and on the way, she mentions that she knows he has started developing the dungeon and has a great idea for it. As she tries to pull out her idea from her bag, she gets distracted and almost gets hit by a car, but Shuya saves her in a romantic moment. He calls her his lucky charm, and says her presence has been good for him. He then snaps her out of her daydream with a light tap on the head and starts walking away. Yun asks him about her idea, and Shuya tells her that if she can find someone to vouch for her, she can present her idea. If it's good, she'll be responsible for developing the game. Back at the office, Shuya learns from an employee that Yun left early because she had a blind date. This annoys Shuya. Meanwhile, Yun goes on her date with a guy named Cho. They talk, and she explains that she's always busy with work, which is why she's never dated anyone before. Cho lightens the mood and finds her personality attractive. Shuya keeps calling her, and after she ignores several calls, he persists until she finally answers. He lies, saying he urgently needs some papers, so Yun has to leave and Cho understands the situation and offers to take her back. In reality, Shuya is at his scheduled meeting, expecting to meet with the company's president to finalize a deal. However, the president's sister shows up instead, trying to flirt with Shuya. He receives a video call from his sister and excuses himself to answer it in private. But the woman insists he take the call in front of her. He replies with, whatever you think, and then answers the call. His sister asks where he is, and he says he was supposed to have a business meeting, but it seems to have turned into a blind date, which he's not interested in. The woman gets upset, thinking his sister is actually his girlfriend, and after a brief confrontation, she leaves angrily. Shoya stays calm and asks his sister why she called. She tells him she's returning to China soon, and that he should come pick her up, then ends the call. Shoya then drops Xing Yun off at the company, and tells her she's kind, and that they should go out for dinner together another day, Yun is overjoyed that he likes her and heads inside, unable to believe it. She starts daydreaming about how Shuya will apologize, call her beautiful, and give her the contract to develop the game, The Dungeon. She laughs to herself until the other employees notice her and ask why she's there. She tells them that Shuya said he needed important papers. They inform her that he left early and probably did this as a punishment after finding out she went on a blind date. Yun shrugs it off and calls Shuya in front of them, pretending to be indifferent. She tells him, Fine, but get ready because the guy I went out with really liked me, and we're going to be together soon, then hangs up. 
Shuya gets really jealous. As promised, Shuya lets Yoon present her idea for developing the dungeon in front of him and all the managers. Everyone is impressed with her idea, and she finishes the presentation and returns to her friends. They caution her that Shuya might reject her idea because of what she did, but Yun confidently says that would be foolish. Just then, Shuya appears behind her, having overheard everything. Her friends signal to her that Shuya is there, and she nervously changes her tone, praising Shuya as the best boss. Shuya then calls her over, and she follows him, scared that she might get fired. Instead, Shuya tells her that they have accepted her idea for developing the dungeon, and that she'll be responsible for the game's development, giving her three months to complete it. Yoon is ecstatic and thanks him, nearly bursting with happiness as she leaves. A few days later, Shuya checks in with Yoon to see how the game development is progressing. She presents her latest idea, but he asks her to revise it. She's a bit frustrated and asks him if he's serious, to which he replies that he is. He also tells her she needs to start dating to understand the game's relationship and dating aspects better. Shuya then asks if she's been in contact with the guy she went on a date with. Yoon tells him that Cho, unfortunately, hasn't called her back, even though he was really nice to her. Shuya asks for her phone and sends a message to Cho, trying to sabotage things by asking why he hasn't called Yoon back. Yoon gets upset, thinking that now Cho definitely won't respond. But to her surprise, Cho replies, saying he'll pick her up at the office that evening for a date. Yun is delighted, but Shuya is visibly irritated. Later that night, after work, the employees stay behind, eager to see who Yun's date is. Shuya sees them and asks what they're doing, and they tell him they're waiting to see Yun's boyfriend. Shuya looks over and sees Yun leaving and getting into a car with Cho, which shocks him. He tries to catch up to her, but doesn't make it in time. Shuya is left standing there, realizing that Cho was his sister's ex-boyfriend. Cho takes Yun to the cinema, but during the movie, Cho falls asleep, which surprises Yun. However, she doesn't mind too much and just snacks on some popcorn while reminiscing. His sister returns from her trip and finds Shuya waiting for her outside her home. They go inside, and Shuya notices that she's sad. He asks her if she still loves Cho and why they broke up in the first place. She explains that his family found out she had a child, and she blames Shuya for it. He tells her to call him if she needs anything, and then leaves. After the movie, Cho and Yun leave together, and he apologizes for falling asleep. She brushes it off, saying it's okay, and accepts his apology. He then asks her how she'd feel about coming over to his place at the weekend to watch another movie together. She casually replies, sure, no problem, and they make plans. The next day, Yun tells her friend about the upcoming movie night at Cho's place. Her friend teases her, saying it sounds like Cho is ready to take things to the next level and drags Yun to a clothing store to help her prepare. Coincidentally, Shuya sees them there and asks what they're doing. Yun's friend accidentally blurts out that Yun will be going to Cho's house that weekend. Shuya gets upset but stays silent, telling them to wait while he finishes paying. They then spot Shuya's sister with him and assume she's his girlfriend, panicking and running out of what he was looking for. He replies, Cho's new girlfriend. Yun then asks her friend why they ran, and her friend explains it's because they didn't want Shuya's girlfriend to see her, adding that she has a hunch Shuya has liked Yun for a long time. Yun dismisses the idea, but her friend insists, saying she should think about it and ask herself how she feels when she thinks about him. Nice, but she doesn't believe he's interested in her. Her friend responds, You'll see. He's probably upset right now and will do anything to stop you from spending that night with Cho. Yun remains unconvinced. Later that night, Cho takes Yun to his house. When they arrive, his mother opens the door, surprising Yun when she realizes Cho still lives with his parents. They invite her in and treat her kindly, getting to know her and even talking about marriage, which makes her laugh in disbelief. She realizes they already like her. Just then, her phone rings. It's Shuya. He lies, telling her he's with the marketing manager for The Dungeon Game, and needs her to come over immediately. Yoon agrees and asks for the location. Shuya then calls his cousin, explaining the situation and asking him to pretend to be the marketing manager. His cousin agrees and suggests they meet at the golf club he's currently at. Shuya agrees and gives Yoon the details. Yoon apologizes to Cho's family, explaining she has to leave, and as she's about to go, Cho's mom gives her a bracelet as a gift. Yun tries to refuse, knowing it's expensive, 
but Cho's mom insists. Cho offers to drive Yun, but she declines, saying a taxi will do just fine. As she leaves, Cho watches her go, only to spot Shuya's sister standing at a distance. Says she came to see the girl who managed to make him forget her, noting that Yun seems sweet and innocent, unlike him. Cho falls silent and they start to argue. Meanwhile, Yun's taxi driver takes her to a secluded area. He tells her he's lost and can't find the golf club, as there's no signal in the area. Yun decides to get out, convinced she'll find f Yun tries calling Shuya but can't get through. Suddenly two men pull up in a car, offering to give her a ride. But when she looks inside their car and sees various suspicious tools, she realizes they're organ traffickers and knows if she gets in, they'll likely turn her into spare parts. Terrified, she thinks quickly and tells them she dropped an expensive bracelet and act at the police station Shuya is extremely worried since Yun is late. Eventually, she calls him crying and tells him she can't make it because she's at the police station. She explains what happened and Shuya is frantic. He grabs his cousin and they rush to the station. When Shuya arrives, Yun sees him and apologizes, asking if she ruined his work. Shuya angrily tells her that work isn't important right now and asks if she's okay. Yun, still shaken, says she almost became a human kebab. She then approaches him, tears in her eyes, and he comforts her. As she tries to stand, she nearly collapses, and Shuya supports her, realizing her leg is injured from running. The police officer then shows Shuya the surveillance footage from the area. He ex she managed to escape and found two security guards at a nearby factory who helped her. However, they suspected the men were after her and stole her bag before running off. Shuya is furious and vows to look after Yun from now on. He insists she shouldn't go to isolated places again, and she agrees, and feeling grateful. She starts praising him, saying, you know, you come off as cold, but you're really kind inside. This makes him happy. Then she starts talking about Cho, mentioning how his family loved her and even gave her a bracelet as a gift. Shuya gets jealous and tosses the bracelet on the ground. She confronts him, saying, if you're into me, I'm not into you. You're handsome and all, but you're not my type, and there's no way I'd ever fall for you. Shuya is silent for a moment, thinking. Then he responds, Look at yourself. How could I ever be into you? Just then, his cousin arrives and introduces himself as the marketing manager with Shuya by his side. Yun is mortified, thinking all her assumptions were wrong, and that she mentally scolds herself for what she said earlier. Shuya then tells her to get in the car and they continue the charade with his cousin, talking business on the way to her house. When they arrive, Shuya's cousin hands him the car keys and says goodbye. Shuya approaches Yun's house, but no one answers the door. He tells Yun to call her parents. She agrees and calls her mom, who casually tells her they're out at a hotel for the night and hangs up. Yun is shocked and doesn't know what to do. She lies to Shuya, saying her mom is in the shower and her dad is in the other bathroom. She tells him to leave and they'll open the door for her soon. Shuya pretends to leave, but when Yun tries calling Cho, he doesn't answer because he's with his ex, Sheena. Arrive at his house, Yun hops around because of her injured leg. She tries to apply ice to the swelling, but struggles to do it properly. Shuya steps in to help and Yun finds herself staring at him, lost in thought. She then asks how much the bracelet Cho's mom gave her might be worth. When Shuya tells her a high price, she tries to take it off. They struggle with it, using soap to help, and in the process, she accidentally slips and spills soap on him. Shuya playfully sprays her with soap, and they end up joking around. Yun then asks to take a shower, so Shuya gives her some clothes to wear. She assumes they belong to his girlfriend and feels awkward, but doesn't say anything. After she showers, Shuya suggests she sleep in his room, but Yun insists on sleeping in the guest room. When she gets there, she's surprised to find it doesn't have a bed. What's this? she asks. Shuya explains there's no bed in there and offers his room again. Saying he'll sleep on the couch, she tells him not to worry and says she'll sleep on the couch. He agrees, but when she realizes he took her seriously, she laughs, saying, I was just messing with you. I'll sleep in your room like you said. She goes to his room to sleep. The next morning, Yun is startled to find Shuya picking her up and hiding her in the closet. Confused, she asks why he's doing this. Shuya whispers for her to stay quiet, as he's hiding from his sister, who shouldn't see her. However, his mischievous nephew opens the closet door, revealing them. The nephew innocently asks, what are you and auntie doing in the closet? Shuya remains silent, 
but then his sister Shin arrives. She sees them and is immediately embarrassed, thinking Yun must be Shuya's girlfriend and that the child is their illegitimate son. She heads to the kitchen to make breakfast and Yun tries to leave, but Shin insists she stays and eats with them. Yun tries to decline, saying she isn't hungry, but the little boy interrupts. Not hungry? I can hear your stomach growling from here. Come on, let's eat. Yun reluctantly agrees and sits down. While they're eating, Shin tells Shuya that she came over to drop off her son for the day. The boy asks Yun what she does for a living, and she tells him she's an artist at Shuya's company. He then asks her to draw him an animal, so she does, playing with him several times. The boy starts to like her, and Shin notices how kind Yun is. Yun quickly finishes her meal and tries to leave, but Shuya stays behind to talk with his sister. He asks her what she thinks of Cho's new girlfriend, and Shin responds, She seems nice, like Cho, not like me. As Yun walks away, she wonders if Cho or Shuya will show up to take her home. Just then, Shin pulls up and offers her a ride, chatting with her without revealing that she's Cho's ex-girlfriend. She takes Yun to the hospital where the doctor tells Yun she needs to rest for three days until the swelling in her leg goes down. Yun protests, saying she can't afford to take time off work, but Shin takes her home anyway. When they arrive, Yun thanks Shin, noting that she's kind, just like Shuya, even though she comes across differently. After Shin leaves, the boy tells Shuya that Cho invited him out for pizza and promised to take him out every Thursday, but told him not to tell his mom. The boy adds, Cho is a nice guy. Shuya is surprised and realizes that Cho still has feelings for his sister, Shin. When Shin returns home that evening, Shuya tells her what the boy said and then takes the boy to her car so they can go home. The next day at work, Yun chats with her friend about what happened the day before. She mistakenly switches the conversation from private to group chat without noticing. She says, It looks like Shuya has an illegitimate son. Everyone in the group chat is shocked, including Shuya, who responds, I'm Shuya and I didn't know that about myself. Yun realizes her mistake and is horrified. She rushes to apologize to Shuya, but he isn't upset with her at all. Then his secretary arrives to remind him of an external meeting. As Shuya leaves, Yun notices he forgot his laptop, so she hobbles on one leg to catch up with him and hands it over. Seeing her struggle, Shuya tells her to rest and work from home for a few days, sending him updates on her project daily. She happily agrees. Yun then returns to her friends, who ask her what happened. She tells them she'll be working from home for a few days, and they ask what happened with Cho. She slips up and reveals that she was at Shuya's house. Her friends are shocked and start asking for more details, but Yun refuses, saying she won't spread any more rumors about her boss. She leaves them and heads home, where she tells her uncle about her work from home arrangement. She starts working from home and sends Shuya regular updates on her project. At the end of the week, Shuya keeps video calling her. She teases him saying, it's the weekend, aren't you going to eat? He replies, no, and don't you dare hang up the call. He keeps making excuses to stay on the call with her. Then, Yoon's mom calls out to her saying, Cho is here. Yoon panics and tries to get up, accidentally moving her phone but forgetting to end the call. Her mom enters the room and says, I invited Cho over to get to know us, just like you got to know his family. Get dressed and come out. She leaves the room, and Yoon's face turns pale. Shuya, still on the video call, is furious. When Yoon comes out, her father scolds her, how can a girl leave with you perfectly fine and come back limping? Yoon sits down, and before she can explain what happened, Cho steps in and says, It's my fault. We were playing a game, and because of me, she got hurt. I'm really sorry. They all sit down to eat, and afterward, Cho goes with Yoon to her room. Shuya is still sitting there, anxious about what might happen between them. Yoon explains everything to Cho, telling him how she encountered organ traffickers on her way to meet her boss, and how they almost turned her into shawarma if it weren't for divine intervention. Cho is shocked and apologizes for not being there for her that night and not answering her calls. She tells him, no, it's okay, that was my mistake, not yours. She then explains that she had to spend the night at her boss's house. He understands and trusts that nothing happened between her and her boss. He leaves and when she picks up her phone, She's shocked to see Shuya still on the call. She exclaims, What? You're still on the call? He casually replies, It's for work. I also entertain myself by listening to your boring conversation with your boyfriend. She scolds him. Is that appropriate? These are people's private matters. Shuya retorts, 
Private matters? You've exposed all my secrets at the office, and I never said a word about it. She sighs. You never forget, do you? She then tells him she'll send the project updates via email and abruptly ends the call. A few days later, Shuya drops by the office to give her a ride home. Her leg has healed significantly, so she gets into the car with him. On the way, they pass by Shin's shop, and Shuya stops to watch her get into a car with someone else. He becomes jealous and starts following the car, leaving Yun confused. She asks, What's going on? This isn't the way to my house. But he doesn't respond. When he suddenly stops at a red light, Yun is jolted, and her bracelet breaks. She anxiously apologizes, saying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Shoya then blurts out, Let's get married. She's stunned and doesn't reply. Later that night, after dropping her off, Shuya tries to ease the tension by telling her to forget about his marriage proposal and to think of it as if he never said anything. He suggests they should take some time to get to know each other better first. She agrees and heads inside. The next day, Yoon goes to her cousin's wedding, where her cousin insists she tries on a wedding dress and takes pictures of her wearing it. When Yoon's cousin finds out that Yoon's boyfriend proposed but she turned him down, she playfully takes Yoon's phone and sends the pictures to Shuya, thinking he's her boyfriend. She adds a cheeky message, Come on, marry me! Yoon is horrified but can't get her phone back. Shuya sees the pictures and laughs, realizing Cho must have proposed to her. After the photo shoot, Yoon goes to grab some food at the supermarket. Her friend calls, warning her that the boss is on his way. Yoon says she's on her way back, but is surprised when her friend mentions that Shuya was supposed to be in a meeting with investors. She adds, It seems like they were annoyed by him and kicked him out. But as she turns around, she finds Shuya standing right behind her. She's startled and tries to rush back to work, but he stops her and tells her to finish eating first. He then shows her the pictures her cousin sent, and she's utterly embarrassed. Shuya asks, Did Cho propose to you or what? She's so flustered that she accidentally spits food at him. He's annoyed by her clumsiness and takes her shopping for a new outfit, but he makes her pay for it, despite the high cost. She's about to explode with frustration and complains, This outfit costs two months of my salary! How is that fair? She's on the verge of yelling at him, but when he looks at her, she pretends she was just raising her hand. Shuya enjoys teasing her, but he becomes upset and jealous when she accidentally mentions Cho. She tells him that Cho will join them on the company trip the next day. Annoyed, Shuya leaves without a word. That night, Yoon learns how to make sushi from her colleagues. She prepares sushi for Cho to eat during the trip to the resort. However, the next morning, she's surprised to get a call informing her that Shuya ordered everyone to travel by bus while non-employees like Cho would have to meet them at the resort. This was clearly Shuya's way of preventing her from getting too close to Cho on the way there. Yoon apologizes to Cho and tells him they'll meet at the resort. When she boards the bus, the only available seat is next to Shuya, which frustrates her. She reluctantly sits beside him and soon falls asleep on his shoulder. When she wakes up, she reaches for the sushi, only to find that Shuya has eaten all of it. She exclaims, That sushi was mine, right? Shuya smugly replies, Yes, and it tasted terrible. He smirks as they arrive at the hotel. As they wait for their rooms, Shin shows up and pretends to be Shuya's girlfriend, shocking everyone. Later, everyone goes for a walk around the resort. Yun tries to take a picture with her two friends, and Shin offers to take the photo. While chatting with Yun, Shin jokes that she's the company's good luck charm, and that her luck is what's making Shuya's company successful. Yun downplays it, saying, It's nothing like that. But her friends insist, Nothing? Tell Shin about how Shuya was desperately looking for a manager to close a deal but had no idea what he looked like. Then, one day, Yun accidentally bumped into a car and it turned out to be the manager Shuya was searching for. Thanks to that, Shuya closed the deal. Shin laughs and starts to like Yun even more. Yun's friends then talk about the chemistry between her and Shuya, which makes Yun nervous, especially since she thinks Shin is Shuya's girlfriend. She tries to leave, but when Shuya asks Shin, Sis, when are you heading back? Everyone realizes that Shin is actually his sister. Yoon is relieved and stays with the group. When they return to the hotel, Yoon notices Cho. She approaches him, but Shuya and Shin follow closely behind. Cho sees them and is shocked. Yoon quickly explains, This is my boss and his sister. Cho remains stunned and they all pretend not to know each other. 
That night, they all have dinner together with Cho and Shin clearly uncomfortable. Yun tries to serve Cho some food. Shuya rudely dismisses her. She looks at him and asks, Did I upset you in some way? He remains silent and doesn't respond. After they finish, they play a game of truth or dare. Yun feels embarrassed when she has to admit she spent the night at a man's place. And it wasn't Cho. She tries to leave, but her two colleagues, Yigi and Aimi, intervene and help her get ready for Cho. They dress her in a beautiful dress and offer relationship advice. By coincidence, Shuya appears as he supports his sister. He's surprised and impressed by Yun's appearance. However, when Yun asks him about her makeup, he bluntly says it looks terrible and then goes inside. Yun is disheartened and decides to remove her makeup. When Cho enters, he finds her in her regular pajamas and tells her she looks beautiful anyway, but nothing happens between them. Later that night, Yun takes a walk and sees Cho. He decides to accompany her. Shuya sees them and asks Yun where she's going so late. She replies, it's none of your business, and walks away. Shuya follows her, and they come across Cho and Yun together. Yun explains to Cho that her son's leg is broken and he's in the hospital. Cho offers to take her there, and Shuya says he'll go too, since he has important work to do. Yun is even more puzzled. At the hospital, Yun finds her son crying and in pain. The doctor is Shuya's mother, and when she sees Shin, she is upset. She tells Yun that her son needs surgery, which she performs. After the surgery, she speaks to Shin and Cho, saying, I saved your son because that's my job, but I can't approve of a relationship between him and my son. She then leaves. The next day, Aimi and Yigi ask Yun if she managed to get closer to Cho. She tells them no, as he had to return to the city. They are surprised and take her to join Shiya and the team for a self-defense training session. They arrive at the training facility, put on training clothes, and have a great time. Afterward, Yoon goes out with her friends to buy a gift for Cho. While shopping, a staff member tells them about a nearby temple that grants wishes. Excited, they visit the temple. Yoon writes her wish on a ribbon, hoping for a relationship with Cho to continue. She struggles to hang it but eventually asks for help. When Shuya sees her wish, he takes the ribbon and throws it away, then leaves. Yun follows him, asking why. He doesn't answer and takes them back on the bus. On the bus, Yun falls asleep from exhaustion, and Shuya makes a romantic gesture by leaning his shoulder against her. He gazes at her dreamily throughout the journey. At the hospital, Cho's son wakes up, and while Shuya's mother is changing his bandages, she asks him about his father. Cho says he doesn't know his father and has never seen him. Shuya arrives to visit Cho's son and is asked if he loves Yun or his sister Shin. He doesn't answer and says he plans to marry Yun soon. Shuya's sister calls him, saying her son is ill and asking him to come quickly. He rushes there with Shuya. The doctor informs them that the child has a fever, which is normal after surgery, and advises them to stay the night. Shuya wants to stay, but she refuses, saying it's her responsibility to care for her son. Back at the hotel, Yun keeps sending messages to Cho and trying to call him, but he doesn't respond at all. When she reaches the office and learns from Eamon that Shin is at the hospital, she thinks she's the cause, as Shuya saved her during their training. She quickly heads to the hospital and upon finding out that Cho is visiting Shin's son, hands over his laptop and tells him to return to work. She leaves and on her way, coincidentally spots Shuya, stops a taxi and gets out to approach him. She tells him that she tried calling him multiple times to check on him. He makes an excuse, saying he was busy and apologizes to her. He then takes her to a restaurant for a meal. While drinking, he seems lost in thought and depressed. Yun notices this and realizes something is bothering him, but she doesn't ask. On another day, Yun tells her secretary, Leon, that she's going to a game development conference with Shuya. Leon is thrilled and they attend together. Several people at the conference are impressed with Yoon and try to approach her, but she politely declines with Shuya by her side. She finds out that a famous game developer she admires won't be attending the conference, which makes her very sad. Shuya notices and takes her to meet the developer in person, making her extremely happy. She takes a photo with him, and then Shuya takes her out for dinner, making her day even better. After the meal, he drops her off at her place. Meanwhile, Shuya's mother talks to Cho, expressing her disapproval of Shin because she was previously married and has a child, while Cho has never been married. She insists she can't support them getting back together, which deeply saddens Cho, though he doesn't fully agree with her. 
Frustrated, he leaves angrily and heads to the hospital, where he sees Shin entering. It becomes clear that Cho genuinely loves her, but is unsure of what to do. Cho decides to act on his feelings. The next day, he visits Yun and asks her to come with him to try on a wedding dress. She agrees, and when she tries on a dress, it looks stunning on her. Cho forgets his phone on the table while he's busy, and it rings. Yun answers, and it's Shuya. Shuya angrily tells Cho to stay away from his sister because Shin lost consciousness at the hotel, and if he tries to get close to her again, he'll make him regret it. He then hangs up. Yun is shocked to discover that Shin was Cho's ex-girlfriend, and it makes her very sad. Cho learns that Shin lost consciousness, which worries him greatly, so he rushes to see her. Yun follows him and sees him being close to Shin, making her even more upset. Not knowing what to do, she goes to Shuya and cries, accusing him of ruining her life just to get Cho back with Shin and help her. Shuya tries to convince her that this isn't true, but she walks away from him. Cho takes Shin to his mother at the hospital and tells her that he loves Shin so much that he was willing to marry Yun, divorce her, and ruin her life just to be a divorcee like Shin so their relationship could be accepted. Shin is hurt by his words and way of thinking, slaps him hard, and then walks away. The next day, Yun meets Cho, breaks up with him, and leaves. She returns to the office where Shuya approaches her, asking if she's okay, but she ignores his question. She talks to him about work and tells him to keep their relationship strictly professional before walking away. She continues to avoid him for several days and every time he tries to talk to her, she brushes him off. A few days later, Yun meets with the programming team at the company to discuss developing the project she's working on. She wants to learn programming to improve the project, so she approaches a colleague who is a programmer and asks him to teach her. He tells her he's too busy and leaves, which discourages her. She works late on the project until everyone else leaves, and she's the last one in the office. Shuya is there, watching over her to ensure she's okay, but she doesn't notice. When she finishes, she takes a bus home, and Shuya follows alongside the bus to make sure she's safe until she arrives. The next day, Shuya approaches Yun again asking for her help in developing a game as a way to teach her programming, knowing she wants to learn. She refuses, saying she's not a programmer. Shuya insists, saying he's the boss and she must listen to him. He then sits her down and begins teaching her while she helps with the game development. She starts playing the game with him, and as they play, he lightens the mood, and she gradually starts treating him well again. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Shin's mother brings food for her son when she finds there's nothing available. The child enjoys it a lot and thanks her, which makes her reconsider accepting her son Cho's relationship with Shin. On another evening, everyone from the company goes out for dinner together. After they finish, Yun steps out and finds Shuya waiting for her. She walks up to him and they take a walk together. Yun talks about work the whole time while Shuya stays silent. As they drive home, Yun's mother calls asking why she's late. Yun lies and says she's with Cho, not telling her that they've broken up, and then hangs up. Shuya gets upset about this, stops the car, and tells her to get out, sarcastically telling her to take the bus home and let Cho take care of her. He then leaves her there. At the hospital, Cho's mother talks to him and tells him that Shin's son is getting better and will be discharged the next day. She tells him he's free to choose whether to be with Shin or not, and that she won't object anymore after seeing how much he loves Shin and how sad he's been lately. Cho is overjoyed and thanks her. Later, he meets with Shin and asks her to get back together, assuring her that his family won't oppose it. However, she is conflicted and ultimately refuses, telling him that she will stay with her son and take care of him and that she won't enter into another relationship. Cho is heartbroken and doesn't know how to convince her. One night, Yun stays up late alone and Shuya comes by. He tries to get close to her, but she hits him on the head with a bottle and then runs away, not returning home. The next day, Shuya calls Cho from the hospital after receiving treatment, telling him that the idiot opened his head and that he should come see him. He hangs up afterward. Yun arrives at the office and Shuya notices she looks tired and hasn't slept since the previous night due to the fear of what she did to Cho. Shuya tells her to rest in his office while he goes out. After a while, when Yun wakes up, she finds that Shuya has brought her a lot of her favorite food. 
She's surprised by his kindness and starts eating without holding back, thanking him for being nicer and gentler with her than before. After she finishes eating, Shuya takes her to the hospital to see Cho, where she apologizes for hitting him. She then leaves and goes home, where she finds her parents and friends worried sick about her. Her mother sits her down and tells her that when she didn't come home the previous night, they thought something had happened to her and called Cho to search for her, as her mother still doesn't know that she and Cho have broken up. Cho comes to check on her, and she takes him outside to thank him for looking for her and making sure she was okay. She tells him she's no longer upset with him about what happened, and they agree to remain friends. Cho then leaves. The next day, at a pastry shop, Shin is shown a strange order by the employees. She is surprised to learn that it was placed by her ex-husband, Ling, and she can't believe it, so she rushes out. On the way, she recalls memories of her time with Ling, including the accident he had, their divorce, and their child, who was still very young at the time. She arrives at a hotel room they used to stay in and knocks on the door. When it opens, she is shocked to see Ling standing there. Ling invites her in, and they sit together as he tries to explain why he left her back then. However, she refuses to listen and tries to leave. Ling then asks to see his son, and she agrees, telling him it's his right. She later takes their son out, and the three of them have lunch together. Ling tries to lighten the mood with his son, but the child clearly doesn't like him. That night, after dropping the boy off, Ling calls Cho. The boy tells Cho that he saw his father that day and that he's back from his trip, leaving Cho shocked and unsure of what to do. He fears that Shin might slip away from him. After being discharged from the hospital, Shuya comes to the company to take over the marketing department, while Cho travels to Japan. Many of the employees are impressed by Shuya because of his sensitivity, smooth-talking nature, and charm, except for Yun, who is indifferent. Every time Shuya tries to get close to her, she pushes him away and walks off. He makes several attempts to win her over, but each time she shuts him down and walks away. Eventually, she gets fed up and yells at him over the phone, telling him not to try to get close to her again as she's only at the company to work and nothing else. Then she hangs up on him. She goes home and talks with Shuya, checking up on him. She asks him to bring her a specific gift from Japan, but he messes with her by pretending he won't bring it, and then hangs up, leaving her to believe that he won't get it for her. Later, Shuya goes out to a restaurant for dinner. He overhears a couple of guys arguing with a girl and steps in to help her, but the girl ends up taking down both of them herself. Shuya is surprised to see that the girl is Ya, his old girlfriend. Ya is thrilled to see him, and they take a walk together before heading back to his place. Meanwhile, Shuya's secretary Amy calls, and when Ya answers, she assumes Shuya has been messing around in Japan and is dating someone new. The next day, Amy spreads this rumor to Yun and another colleague. Yun hears it but doesn't believe it. Then a colleague invites them to try out a new game that's about to be released and they all go to test it out and end up enjoying it a lot. In Japan, Ya visits Shuya and takes him out to spend time together, trying to get closer to him. At the same time, back at the company, Yun gets a call from Jo, who asks her to bring him a USB drive from his office and meet him at a specific location. She does as he asks, but when she gives him the USB, he tries to make her laugh, but it doesn't work. He then asks her to wait outside because he needs her, but she refuses and leaves. At the same time, Ling goes out with Shin, trying to ease the tension and convince her to get back together for the sake of their son. Shin seems to be seriously considering it. Meanwhile at work, Joe gets scolded by the boss, and afterward he leaves the office in a bad mood. Yun calls him and tells him she's waiting for him as he asked, so he rushes over, thrilled that she actually waited for him. They go out to dinner together and Joe can't take his eyes off her. Yoon notices and asks him what's going on, to which he confesses that he's really into her and wants to start a relationship. Yoon is shocked and doesn't know how to respond. In Japan, Ya gets a call and Shuya takes her to her destination. Before she leaves, she tells Shuya that she's heading back to China the next day for work. Shuya says that's great because he's also returning to China the next day and they agree to travel back together. Back in China, Ling takes Shin home and apologizes for leaving her in the past. He explains that after the accident, he thought he'd never be able to move again, so he left her because he didn't want to be a burden. He asks her to get back together, but she remains silent. At that moment, Cho is watching them from a distance, feeling jealous and very upset. 
Shuya packs his bag in Japan and holds a gift he bought for Yun, feeling happy that he'll see her soon. When he arrives at the company, he's surprised to find Joe being very attentive to Yun, which makes Shuya jealous. He calls Yun to follow him into his office. Once inside, he hands her his car keys and tells her to go get the gift he brought for her. Yun is overjoyed and can't believe it, so she rushes out, finds the gift, and is even happier. She sends Shuya a message, thanking him for remembering her and getting her the gift. Ya arrives at a friend's company, where she runs into Joe, who starts joking around with her. It's revealed that Joe is a partner in the company. The boss then calls both Joe and Ya to a meeting and tells Joe that Ya is there to fix a problem he caused that led to losses for the company. On another day, Shin goes to pick up her son from school and is surprised to find Ling there, playing with him. When she approaches and asks him about it, he clears his throat and tells her that he can't stay away from his son anymore and tries to win her over. He asks her again if they can get back together, but she stays silent. Meanwhile, Shuya asks Yun out on a date, but she doesn't show up, leaving him frustrated. He ends up going out with his friends, feeling down, and later returns to the company to see Yun. In front of Shuya, Joe asks Yun to go out with him. Yun tries to use work as an excuse to refuse, but Joe insists. Shuya reluctantly agrees, not wanting to reveal his jealousy. When Joe and Yun go out, Joe confesses that he genuinely likes her and hasn't been able to think about anyone else since he first met her. However, Yun is still not interested and rejects him. Joe stays quiet but decides he won't give up. He tries to see her at work many times, but every time the employees tell him she's not there, just as she had instructed them to say. At the end of the week, Joe calls Yun while she's sleeping and tells her he forgot a notebook at the office and needs her to bring it to him because he has an important meeting. Yun rushes to the office to get it for him, but when she sees Joe, she realizes he tricked her just to see her. She gives him the notebook and tries to leave, but when he offers to take her out for pizza, she changes her mind because she loves pizza, so she agrees to go out with him. Later that night, Shuya takes Shin's son to drop him off at his mother's house, but he's shocked to see Ling with Shin. Shuya is furious, storms out of the car and punches Ling in the face, telling him, I warned you before, if you come near my sister again, you'll regret it. Shin is upset with Shuya and jumps to the wrong conclusion, saying, So it was you and Grandma who threatened him to stay away from me, right? Shuya doesn't respond and leaves after warning Ling again to stay away from his sister. Shuya then meets Joe, feeling frustrated. Joe asks him if he's in love with Yun, but Shuya denies it. However, Joe doesn't believe him. The next day, Shuya arrives at work, still upset, and Yun finds out from an employee that Shuya is in a bad mood. Meanwhile, Joe arrives with a bouquet of flowers. Joe gives Yun the flowers, but she barely acknowledges him and sits down, ignoring his gesture. Instead, she surprises Shuya with a gift and hands it to him. He thanks her, and it's clear that she's quite fond of him. Amy, the secretary, then takes Ya around the office, introducing her to the staff. Ya informs them that she'll be working on the new project that Yun is leading, and they warmly welcome her. Ya notices the gift on Yun's desk that Shuya brought from Japan and she realizes that Shuya has feelings for Yun. After work, Yun goes to the mall to run some errands and spots Shin's son playing at the arcade. She takes him to play for a while, and during their time together, the boy mentions that his father is back, which surprises Yun. Then Shin arrives with her husband Ling. Yun is stunned when they take the child, noticing how close they seem, and realizes that Shin has left Cho. Another day, Cho sees Shin with Ling and gets upset. He approaches them, and a confrontation ensues. Shin tells Cho to leave and not to come near her again, and then she walks away with Ling, leaving Cho even more shocked and hurt. Later, as they get home, Ling notices that Shin seems sad and lost in thought. She tells him to leave and go home because she's tired and needs to rest, so he agrees and leaves. That night, Shuya goes out drinking with Cho, and they drink until Shuya passes out. Cho calls Yoon and tells her what happened, urging her to come over. Worried, Yun rushes to help Shuya with Joe's assistance, and they manage to get him home. Afterward, Joe sits with Yun and explains why Shuya has been so stressed lately. He tells her that a long time ago, Shuya caught Ling cheating on his sister Shin and chased him down, leading to an accident. Shuya's grandmother settled the situation with Ling, but Ling demanded money, a car, and an apartment in exchange for agreeing to divorce Shin. 
Although Ling initially left, he has now returned, trying to get close to Shin again. The worst part is that Shin believes Shuya and his grandmother were the ones who drove Ling away back then, thinking they ruined her life. Meanwhile, Shin's son talks to his mother, saying he loves Cho and wishes he could play with them like he used to. Shin explains that it might not be possible because things have changed since his father returned. One night, Yun and Jo hang out, and Yun admits that she likes Shuya. Jo is pleased and shares that he's in love with Yun. They agree to help each other get closer to Shuya and Yun. Ya and Shuya go for some training sessions to learn self-defense skills. Yun shows up to bring something to Shuya and ends up joining them in the training. Ya jokes, saying she's like Bruce Lee, but she ends up being terrible at it, making everyone laugh. After the training, Shuya picks up his nephew from school, and they spend some time together. The boy tells Shuya that he should make up with his mom so they can spend more time together. Shuya thinks about it and decides the boy is right. The next day, Shin takes her son to the amusement park with Ling. While there, she reminisces about the memories they shared when they used to come to the park together, and how happy she felt. But now, as she walks with Ling, she realizes she's not as happy as she was with Cho. Later that night, Cho meets up with a friend who he had asked to investigate Ling. When Cho asks what he found out, the friend reveals that Ling has racked up a lot of debt and can't pay it off, meaning he might end up in jail soon. Cho becomes furious, realizing that Ling has been getting close to Shin again for financial gain, hoping she would help him out of his situation. The next day, Ling takes Shin out and presents her with a ring, asking her to take him back. Just as she's about to respond, Yun and Zhou arrive and warn her not to say yes because there's a lot she doesn't know about Ling. They suggest she talk to Shuya first. Shin tells Ling that she wouldn't have agreed anyway because she's still in love with Cho, who was the only one there for her when she was suffering after Ling left. Cho overhears this and is deeply moved, realizing how much he means to her, and they reconcile. Shuya then takes Shin aside and tells her everything, including how he caught Ling cheating on her years ago and how Ling blackmailed their grandmother, taking money, a car, and an apartment in exchange for leaving her alone. Shin is shocked by the truth. Meanwhile, Ling, realizing he's been exposed, decides to take their son from school and flee. When Shin and Shuya find out, they're terrified and immediately set out to stop him. Shuya talks to Shin, explaining that Ling has taken out many loans and is unable to repay them. He suggests that Ling might have kidnapped her son to blackmail her for money. Shuya continues to chase after Ling until he finally manages to stop him and rescue the child. The police arrive and arrest Ling, putting an end to the ordeal. Shuya then sits down with Yun for a while and explains why he never told his sister the truth about Ling back then. He admits that Ling was Shin's first love, and he didn't want to hurt her. Yun is touched by Shuya's kindness and realizes how good-hearted he is. After everything is settled, Shuya drives Yun home. Before she gets out of the car, he tells her that everything that happened today is a secret and she shouldn't tell anyone. Yun playfully responds, Come on, your secret is safe with me. I'm the best secret keeper there is. And then she gets out of the car. Another day, Shin and Cho visit Shuya after deciding to get married and share the news with him. He's thrilled for them and congratulates them. They throw a party at Shin's place where everyone gathers and enjoys a great time together. However, the celebration is cut short when they receive news that a game they had been working on has been stolen and is being sold in the market. Everyone is upset and they rush to the company to find out what happened. Shuya is relieved when he discovers that the game wasn't actually stolen. It was part of a plan by Joey and Ya to quickly generate buzz and boost sales. The plan works and everyone is happy as they go out to celebrate. The next day, Shin visits her grandmother, whom she had been estranged from for years, to apologize for misunderstanding her. Her grandmother is deeply moved and overjoyed as they mend their relationship. Later, Yun goes to Shin's bakery to learn how to make sweets from her. Shuya is completely captivated by Yun, his heart fluttering as he watches her. His sister notices and realizes just how much he loves Yun. After Yun leaves, Shin talks to Shuya and advises him to confess his feelings to Yun. She gives him some tips on how to win Yun's heart, but the next day, 
Shuya doesn't follow any of her advice. As soon as he sees Yun, he starts teasing her and gives her his jacket to take for dry cleaning. Yun, slightly annoyed, just says, whatever, and walks away. Ya, on the other hand, tries to get closer to Shuya by sending him a message inviting him to dinner that night. She waits for him for a long time, but he never shows up. Feeling hurt, she eats alone and then leaves. Later, Shin sits with Shuya and asks him why he still hasn't confessed his love to Yun. He replies that he will tell her, but only when the time is right. Yun goes out with Jo to accompany dinner. During the dinner, Jo surprises Yun by presenting her with a large bouquet of flowers and proposing to her in front of everyone. However, Yun is visibly uncomfortable, ignores Jo's proposal, and leaves the event. A few days later, Shuya falls ill and stays at home. When Yun finds out, she goes to his place and stays by his side, taking care of him and applying cold compresses until he starts to feel better. The next day, Shuya wakes up and sees Yun cooking for him. He watches her, filled with happiness that she's there with him. But his happiness is short-lived as he receives a call from the company informing him of a major problem that requires his immediate attention. Shuya quickly takes Yun with him, and they rush to the office. They attend a meeting with the investors, where the lead investor, Lionel, accuses Yun of leaking company secrets related to the project she was overseeing. Yun is shocked and confused, not understanding what's happening. The investor shows a video of a new game launched by a rival company, which is the same game Yun was responsible for developing. He accuses her of leaking the project details. Yun denies the allegations but takes responsibility since she was in charge of the project. Shuya speaks up and tries to find a solution to the problem. He is forced to suspend Yun from her job to appease the investors until her innocence can be proven. Yun is devastated, thinking that even Shuya doesn't believe her. She collects her belongings and leaves the office. Heartbroken, Shuya catches up with her at Shin's shop and offers her a ride home. During the drive, he reassures her that he trusts her completely and knows she didn't leak the project details. He explains that he only suspended her to prevent the real culprit from getting suspicious and making another mistake, which would allow him to catch the person and prove her innocence. After dropping her off at home, Shuya begins investigating the situation with Yun, and they both suspect an employee named Dong of leaking the game information to the rival company. They start monitoring Dong closely. One night, Shuya invites Yun out to dinner. As they enjoy the evening, Yun notices how much kinder and more considerate Shuya has become towards her. She teases him, saying he's changed and become much nicer. Shuya subtly hints that he has feelings for her. Eventually, Shuya gathers enough evidence to prove that Dong was the one who leaked the information. He confronts Dong in front of Yun, Joey, and Amy, forcing Dong to confess and apologize for his actions. Yun's innocence is proven and she is reinstated in her job, much to her delight. Shuya holds a meeting where he makes all the investors apologize to Yun, which makes her even happier. After returning home, Yun spends time cooking for Shuya with her mother. The next day, she brings the food to the office to give it to Shuya, but she becomes upset when she overhears the lead investor telling Shuya to fire her because he believes she's not competent enough. Shuya refuses, telling the investor to mind his own business. This angers the investor, who then convinces the other investors to stop funding Shuya's games and delay the funds he needs, leaving him unable to pay his employees. Shuya becomes frustrated and holds a meeting with the investors, trying to convince them to fund his projects, but they refuse. After the meeting, the lead investor approaches Shuya and tells him that as long as he doesn't follow his instructions, not a single cent will go into the investment fund, and he will continue to struggle. The investor leaves, and Yun is left feeling guilty, thinking she is the reason for the current problems and that the employees are not getting paid. She decides to act like an incompetent employee so that Shuya has a reason to fire her, making it easier for him. She starts slacking off, even falling asleep during work and in meetings. The managers and investors become frustrated and demand that Shuya fire her, which he reluctantly agrees to do. Yoon's colleagues are saddened by her departure. She reassures them that she's not upset because her sacrifice is for Shuya's benefit. Shuya overhears this and realizes she did it all for him. The next day, the salary issue is resolved, and the employees receive notifications that their salaries have been deposited into their accounts. Once this is done, Shuya meets with the investors and ends their partnership, leaving the meeting to address the employees. 
He tells them that all current game projects will be put on hold so they can be improved. He gives them the option to stay with the company or resign, then leaves them to make their decision and returns to his office. Yun, meanwhile, finds a job at a daycare. Shuya, still caring for her, watches her from a distance without her knowing. Back at the company, many employees have resigned due to the game projects being halted and the situation is deteriorating. Later, Shuya gathers his friends at his house to celebrate his birthday. During the celebration, Yun suggests going to the amusement park and riding a particular attraction known for keeping couples together forever. They all go to the amusement park and Ya stands next to Shuya, hoping to ride the attraction with him because she loves him. Yun notices this and feels jealous, but Shuya grabs Yun's hand and takes her on the ride instead, shocking Ya and Jo. After the ride, Shuya, feeling embarrassed, leaves quickly. Ya talks to Yun and explains that the company was shut down, which is why Shuya is upset. Worried about Shuya, Yun runs after him, catches up and talks to him, encouraging him to start over and bring the company back to life. She promises to stay by his side and help him along the way. The next day, Yun goes back to the company, and as soon as the employees see her, they welcome her warmly and are thrilled to have her back. The entire team gets motivated and starts working with renewed energy. Days go by and everyone is working at full capacity. Yoon is focused and making great progress on the game she was responsible for. Shuya is incredibly happy and keeps an eye on her while she works. And the employees notice this, realizing that he has feelings for her. Shuya needs some money, so he sells his apartment and starts sleeping in his office. When Yoon finds out, she visits him and watches him sleep, thinking about how she can help. She comes up with an idea and takes him to an apartment belonging to a relative of hers, which is close to her house. She tells him he can stay there until things get better for him. Shuya thanks her, and after she leaves, he looks around the place. Seeing how she had set up everything for him in the apartment, he falls even more in love with her. That night, Shuya steps out onto the balcony for some fresh air, and Yun, who is on her own balcony, sees him and is happy. They chat for a while, and Shuya lightens the mood. However, Yoon hears her mother calling and quickly goes back inside. The next day at the company, Shuya discusses with the employees and sets deadlines for the projects Yoon is working on. Shuya and Yoon begin working together at her place after work, growing closer in the process. One night, Shuya confesses his love for her, telling her that he has loved her for a long time. He asks if they can start dating, but Yoon is surprised and suggests they postpone talking about their relationship until they finish developing the game they're working on. Shuya is disappointed and a bit puzzled, but accepts her decision. Meanwhile, Jo starts developing feelings for Yoon, and he approaches her to tell her that he likes her and asks if they can date. However, Yoon turns him down and walks away. That day is the company's anniversary, and when Shuya arrives at the office at night, he is surprised by a celebration organized by the employees. Shuya is deeply touched and thanks them before they all celebrate together. The next day, Amy talks to Yoon and tells her that Shuya didn't actually sell his apartment. He was just staying at the company for work reasons. Yoon is surprised to learn that Shuya lied to her so he could stay close to her in her relative's apartment. She says, Okay, I see, and takes his belongings along with her colleagues to bring them back to his house. The following day, Shuya asks Yoon if he can return to his apartment. Yun tells him, unfortunately, that's not possible because her relative is doing renovations and it's not suitable for living at the moment. She doesn't mention that she knows about the lie. Shuya agrees and leaves. When he gets back to his apartment, he finds stuffed animals all over the place and realizes that Yun was the one who set it up. He laughs, and then Yun appears behind him, asking if it's okay to lie to her. Shuya moves closer to her, explaining that he lied because he wanted to be near her and see her every day. He took the opportunity to stay in her relative's apartment so he could be close to her. The mood lightens up and they share a romantic moment together. The next day, Yoon goes to the airport to meet a girl arriving from abroad who will be in charge of the development team at Shuya's company. This is based on an agreement Shuya made when he was in Japan. The girl, Z, is interested in Shuya and asks Yoon if he is in a relationship. Yoon is taken aback by the question and replies that she doesn't know. Z arrives at the company and meets Shuya, and they have a conversation. It turns out that Z was Shuya's first love, and they broke up a long time ago, but she still has feelings for him. 
The next day, Zi brings food for the employees as a reward for their hard work. She sees Shuya sitting next to Yun and takes a seat next to him, trying to get closer. Shuya, however, takes Yun's hand to show Zi that he loves Yun, making it clear that he won't get back together with Zi. Zi is shocked and leaves. Yun gets upset with Shuya for not telling her that he was once in a relationship with Zi. Shuya apologizes and takes her out to dinner to make up for it. The next day at the company, Yun has lunch with Shuya and suggests that they develop a game for couples to play together, helping them grow closer. Shuya loves the idea and gets excited about it. He gathers the employees and shares Yun's idea with them and they all love it and get motivated. Shuya explains the idea to the programmers so they can start working on it. Z, still holding on to her feelings for Shuya, visits Shuya's grandmother and apologizes for leaving Shuya in the past. She explains that she left for America to get treatment because she was sick and asks Shuya's grandmother to help her get back together with him. Shuya's grandmother agrees to try. Later, Z takes Yun shopping and subtly annoys her with comments, which irritates Yun, and she walks away. Shuya later visits his grandmother for lunch after she invites him, and he's surprised to find Z there. They sit down to eat, and his grandmother suggests that he give Z another chance since they are a good match. Shuya refuses and leaves. A few days later at the company, the employees test a beta version of the couple's game that Yun suggested. It turns out to be great, and Shuya and Yun have a lot of fun playing it together. Z then posts an album of photos of her with Shuya at his grandmother's house and spreads a rumor that they are dating. Yun sees the photos and gets jealous and upset. She quits her job and leaves. When Shuya finds out, he goes to her house to explain that there is nothing between him and Z, but her father answers the door and angrily tells Shuya that his daughter Yun is very upset and that it's surely his fault. He asks her to meet and she agrees. He goes out for a bit and then enters her room. He explains to her why he was with Shi and that when his grandmother asked him to return to Shur, he refused because he loves her. She understands and lets it go. The next day, she goes to the supermarket and sees Yao. She approaches her, and Yao tells her that she and Joe are now a couple and invites everyone to have lunch at their place the next day. She also invites her and Shui to join them. She agrees, and the next day, she and Shui go over, and they have a great time with her lover. They see Joe and Yao joking around and realize that they are a good match, and everyone is happy for their relationship. At the company, she later tells Shui that the game lineup they are planning to release is not enough and only targets specific segments. She suggests that the foreign partner might not agree to the partnership or investment in the company. She then asks Shui to get back together with her, promising to change the evaluation in his favor and convince the partner. Shui refuses, of course. Shur then meets Yun and tells her to stay away from Shui because she is not right for him and will harm him. Yun leaves, upset, and Shur tries to convince the investor not to invest with Shui. However, the investor tells her that Shui had sent him an evaluation and study of the upcoming projects, which all seem very promising, and that it would be a guaranteed profit so he can't refuse to invest. She is left frustrated and unsure of what to do. Shui attends a party with his grandmother. Shur calls him multiple times, but when he doesn't answer, she shows up at the party. Shui apologizes to her, explaining that his phone was in the car. Moments later, his grandmother suddenly feels unwell and collapses. He rushes her to the hospital and stays with her until the next day. Meanwhile, with his grandmother in the hospital, problems arise at the company, and Shui sits down with his sister Shin to try and solve them. He becomes very busy and neglects Yun. Zhou asks Yao to marry him, but she refuses, saying she needs some time. One night, Shui goes to the company to surprise Yun, only to find her unconscious in the elevator. He is extremely worried and rushes her to the hospital. The doctor tells him that she has anemia due to malnutrition, but will recover soon. A week later, Shui signs the partnership contract with the investor who had been funding him recently. At the signing party, Shui approaches Yun to stand with her and make sure she's okay, but Shibun interrupts them, telling him the investor wants to see him. She takes him away, which makes Yun very jealous and upset. She stands with her friend and drinks a lot of asterisk asterisk asterisk, telling her, You're just an owl. Shui loves only me. She responds, You're just a pet to Shui, nothing more. Yun says, It doesn't matter. I'm still better than you because I'm not with him for my benefit, but because I love him. 
She tears up, and just before she faints, Shui catches her. He tells Shur, stay away from my fiancé, and carries Yun away, leaving everyone shocked by what he said. The next day he goes to pick her up, and is lost in thought about what happened the night before when Yun confessed her love for him. When Yun's parents come in, he tells them that Yun left early. He leaves and goes to the company, where he can't focus on the meeting because he's thinking about Yun. He sends her a message inviting her to lunch, and she is happy, but doesn't reply. During lunch, she eats with her two colleagues, Yiji and Amy, who tell her about what happened the night before, making her feel very embarrassed. She tells them, You know, Shui invited me to lunch today, but I didn't respond because I promised you we'd eat together. She orders Shui's favorite food and tells them to give it to him before leaving. The two colleagues then go to Shui, expecting him to be angry after Yun refused to have lunch with him because of them. They bring the food back to the company and give it to Shui, telling him it's from Yun. As they are about to leave, Shui stops them, asking them how he can get Yun to agree to marry him. They tell him to propose to her directly, so he decides to go for it. That night, he arranges a surprise for Yun and asks her to meet him at a restaurant without telling her he's going to propose. She is amazed when she sees him. He gets down on one knee and proposes, making her happy, but she still refuses. The next day, the employees are surprised to hear that Yun refused Shui's proposal. Joe talks to Shui telling him, you should have hinted at marriage before proposing. Shui responds, do you think I didn't? I tried many times, but she always acted like she didn't understand and changed the subject. Joe asks him, did you propose to Yao? Shui says, yes, but she also refused, saying we should take our time first. He pulls out the ring he bought for Yao, explaining that he couldn't give it to her because she seemed against the idea of marriage right now. Shin arrives and stands with them. As Joe is standing with Yao, a ladder falls, and Joe pushes her out of the way, injuring himself in the process. She worries about him, and they take him to the hospital. After he's treated, Yao approaches Joe and shows him that she's wearing the ring, making him very happy, knowing she's agreed to marry him. Shui's game, No Limits, for married couples is released and people love it, making it a big success. Shui holds a meeting, announcing that the company is back to its original state and even better, thanks to the game's success and profits. That night, he walks with Yun and asks her to marry him again, and this time she agrees. They get married on the same day as Zhou and Yao. He gives her the wedding ring and they celebrate. She takes him to stand by the swimming pool as the celebration continues, and they share a romantic moment together. At the beginning of their marriage, Yun suddenly says, Divorce me! Divorce me! Why won't you open the guest room? Are you cheating on me? Divorce me! He calms her down and takes her to the guest room, where she's surprised to find that it's prepared for the children they plan to have. She asks him why he didn't tell her sooner, and he replies, See, I love you so much, I'd die for you. He jokes with her, lifts her up, and the series ends. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our recap, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out more recaps on our channel. Take care.